everyone. I'm Steve here once again for our weekly interview with Dr. Nario. Thanks for being with us, Dr. Nario. Hi, Steve. Thank you for having me again. Always a pleasure. So Dr. Nario is an integrative physician. You can find out more about what he does at his clinic at BioIntegrative. Um, you can check him out online, uh, BioIntegrative Medical Center. Um, they've, you can just go see the different things that they treat and find out more about their clinic there. So today we're going to talk about something that I love to talk about, which I know nothing about this one, but this is a peptide. You kind of described it as a sleep peptide. I really like peptides. Um, and so uh, you called this DSIP. What's that? Well, Steve, it means Delta Sleep Inducing Peptide. And this is something that I talk about because people look for a peptide for sleep with less side effects. Remember, peptides are very safe and has less side effects and also dependence comparing it to your regular prescription sleep aids such as Ambien, Valiums. Who wants that, right? With peptides, none of that. And not only is it well known as a natural sleep stimulator, but it also modulates the brain. It, dis it was discovered over 40 years ago, around 1977. See how way back it's, it's been out there? And it was seen in the blood of rabbits and also shows good effects in humans. And made in uh, what they call the hypothalamus, which is part of the brain, the central part of the brain. And it's actually created in small amounts. And you will see that in blood. And the patterns on how the, the brain produces this would be in relation to the circadian rhythm. So that's why you would notice that it's related to sleep patterns and it's created most during the nighttime and low in the morning, of course, higher in the PM. And one of the unique characteristics of this peptide, it crosses the blood brain barrier and much of most of these peptides that are out there, they can't, but this one, it can to affect sleep in a very good way. So I'm kind of playing doctor's assistant here for all of you know, that follow the channel, you know, you probably know, but I just want to make sure a peptide is a small chain of amino acids and no, that's that your body makes. So, hey, I, I contributed. <laughs> so <That's right. laughs> uh, tell us how, yeah, just amino acids, which your body makes these peptides, all kinds of peptides. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, that's why you're saying they're safe. I mean, in most cases, but uh Anyway, so tell us about um, how does this help us sleep or how does it cause a deeper sleep? Right. Well, Steve, as the word, I mean, tells us or the, the name itself, Delta Sleep, it promotes Delta Sleep. So maybe we should describe what Delta Sleep is so we can definitely understand. So Delta Sleep is the stage three or the, what we call deep sleep. This is where we're hard to be woken up and muscle tone pulses breathing also lowers down and the body relaxes even to the point that it's it's just you're so down and but brain activity pattern now if you put yourself on an eeg or a machine with, with squiggly lines to assess the brain forms what we call delta waves thus the name delta sleep um and this is what we call slow wave sleep this stage is very critical and very important because this is where we restore and repair the body and allowing for, for growth and recovery. It may also boost the immune system and other bodily processes. It contributes to insightful thinking and alternate, it alternates with REM sleep, just giving us shared time during sleep periods. And with DSIP, you get longer periods of stage three, which is Delta. So as you can see, it's jumping around. And since I mentioned the REM sleep, people think, oh, I always wanna be in REM sleep. Not really. REM sleep is actually where the brain uh, is awake. That's why it's related to vivid dreams. And it is where temporary paralysis occurs, except for breathing and eye movements. Thus, the movement uh, re REM sleep is meaning rapid eye movements. And even though they're closed, they're moving quickly. And REM is believed to be essential to, for cognitive functions like memory. And again, as I mentioned to you, known for the vivid dreams effect. That, but as you can see with my description, REM sleep is not where the body restores itself. It needs to be in stage three. And when we sleep, we jump from stage three 
um, to REM sleep and back and forth, back and forth. But with a, with a peptide, it stays longer in, in stage three, then still jumps off to REM. This is a fascinating peptide. So how would you, how do you use it with your patients? How is it administered? When do you uh, write a um, prescription for this? Well, see, th yes, th that's a, this is very, again, very useful in so many different situations. As I mentioned to you about sleep benefits, not only does it help with sleep, but it has extra services that we can get it from, meaning it also modulates the action of brain regulatory processes in modulating and influence the, the neurotransmitters, such as GABA, promotes GABA, glut glutaminergic, and other brain systems. And it also is used in convulsions. Oh, but this study has been shown only in, in animals for now, but it, create, it, it controls brain excitability, it's neuroprotective, and it has DSIP is uh, very low in the cases of schizophrenia and depression. So that's why you know you want to maintain higher levels of this to prevent these specific illnesses. It is mainly prescribed as a treatment um, plan also for pain, um, even alcohol and opiate withdrawal. So as you can see, how it controls the cravings, uh, the pain sensory system of the brain. And also, it's something that's pre pretty good with stress. Who doesn't have stress nowadays, right? Everybody has stress. And it decreases the, the metabolic and functional disorders that is related to also to stress, meaning the deterioration of the body. And here's one thing that probably you would uh, see uh, find interesting. It boosts hormones because it actually produces a luteinizing, luteinizing hormone, promoting testosterone production naturally. And as a systemic action, it's a systemic antioxidant. And it actually is sometimes preventative for cancer as well. Yeah. And so, you know, everyone that follows the channels knows that I'm on testosterone replacement therapy, a pretty small dosage. How would it, would it affect that? Um, mm -hmm. That's so correct. would it, would it make my testosterone go up or would it balance it all the hormones or how do, how does that work with that? Yeah. So when patients are on testosterone therapy, what we see here is we need to lower down the testosterone dose because you're actually being helped by DSIP to create more testosterone. So it's just really going to be more of a, a lowering of the testosterone rather than the DSIP. Wow. So that makes it even more interesting. So And you get the sleep effects versus the testosterone not really known for those uh, if, uh, sleep right. effects. So you mm -hmm. just basically named all the different things that you could use this for, right? Yes. And you can actually get all of these benefits if you're just thinking that you're hitting sleep. You're getting other good goodies along with it. <clears throat> yeah, I just, I love peptides. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. um, how is it administered? Is it an oral or is it um, insulin needle? How, how, how is it administered? Yeah, so traditionally it has been um, <clears throat> actually given as an IV infusion. However, now it has been changed into a subcutaneous administration. So there you're right, using insulin syringes. Um, that's why, yeah, we, we kind of compare this to just your regular, uh, I guess, other peptides that are injectables. Yeah, that is amazing. Okay, so tell us, uh, can side effects occur? Um, tell us about that. Any potential side effects for uh, using this peptide? Yeah. Well, if you think about it, we, we, people think, oh, I'm, I might get all woozy, get wonky and sedated, and even, oh, I'm going to be sleepy throughout the day. But actually, it's not. What it does, it modulates sleep. It means that it fixes uh, something that is broken, and if it's not, it's just going to leave it alone. So meaning it's not required to be given before bed. You can take it even during the daytime. It will still affect um, affect the, the sleep cycle in a good way. And it's not going to make you lightheaded during the daytime if you do administer it. But of course, we suggest it to be given even, um, I mean, to maybe two or three hours before bed to really get that, that effect. But again, it wouldn't be a harmful idea if you do give it yourself to uh, during the daytime. Nothing's going to be bad. It's still going to give you that effect, not only for one day, but it also will help the sleep for two, three, four, five days and even weeks after. And that's, that's the wonder of that. And that's why I told you there's no sedation related to this. It's a sleep promoter, not a sedative. And the good thing about this, again, no addiction. 
comparing it to prescription medicines for sleep. And if you're talking about minimal side effects, really zero to, um, I mean, maybe a very small amount or even zero, uh, transient headaches, nausea, vertigo. But again, as far as I'm concerned, very, if you do it the right way and you're guided by your doctor, almost none and pretty safe. Yeah, that just, that sounds really amazing. So now you're not saying it makes you sleep for three days. It works for three days. Well, the thing here is, again, remember the word modulating, meaning if let's say you're really not having an issue with sleep, it's just going to tweak it to the point that you get better sleep. It doesn't mean that, oh, I'm going to be uh, sleepy the whole day. So if you really have issues with sleep, then it will max itself out. And meaning, all right, let's really help the, the sleep problem um, to the max. And again, prolong its effect, not only for one day. So, but here's the key. Peptides work when you are consistent with it. It's not like we're going to give it to you one, uh, one shot and you're going to get the effects. It needs to build up in your system. So that's why it's always about consistency of the regimen. That's good information. And, uh, wow, I just, uh, fascinating. Um, and Steve, you have to remember, there is nobody out there who does a majority of the people are not sleeping. And that's one of the things that we have issues now. We play with our phones before going to bed. We have stress. We're thinking, tossing, and turning in bed. So that's why I think this is a peptide that should be considered by everyone out there. Wow. And, you know, sleep is like the more I learn about it, it's so important for everything mm -hmm. that has to do with your health. Right. Now, of course, you guys need to talk to your doctor about this. And but can my last question is, can you take too much of it? Um, that's a good question. Yeah, well, the studies actually had shown that um, they they use uh, high high doses even on animals. That it really, I mean, when I say high doses, um, these are two three times the regular or normal dosing. That it didn't because again, let's go back to the word modulating. So we're even producing this even not only during sleep, we're still creating this during the daytime. So. If you have to remember, when we create peptides, it's all dependent on organs that we have. And as we age, we produce these peptides in decrements. So that's why the older you get, the less probably side effects if you get a higher dose, just because your organs are not creating it anymore. So, but again, on studies, really very safe and, and not really an issue. Okay. I, I kind of fibbed. I have one more question that you may be yeah. thinking of. So can you take too little? Can you take a dose that's so small that it's not really going to have a benefit? Um, you, you can. But the thing here is even with the peptides, we dose it. Um, actually, the dosing is different. Uh, that's why I'm not, if you notice, I'm not mentioning a specific dose because this will be determined by your doctor in assess, assessing specifically how, in, how bad the sleep problem is. So, but when you talk about if you get it too little, is it not going to work at all? No. As I tell you, it stimulates your own hypothalamus to create, or part of the brain, to create your own DSIP. So that's why if you, it's like homeopathic dosing. If you give a little, it'll just be enough to tickle that, home, uh, that hypothalamus to create its own. But again, depends. How old is that hypothalamus? How much wear and tear? How much oxidative stress your brain had gone through? So, but as I say pa to patients, hey, at least you got something rather than nothing. All right. So you guys talk to your doctor about that. If you guys have questions, you can put them in the comment section. I'll always make sure Dr. Nario sees them and can respond when he has uh, time. So that's Dr. Nario at Biointegrative Health Center. Thanks for being with us, doctor. Well, Steve, thank you so much again for having me. It's always a pleasure, as we all know, that our knowledge is your power to better health. And it, thank you for letting me provide you with the edge on longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the bio edge.